I need to apologize to all of you loyal rewired soldiers out there. I have failed you. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And before we get started, man, thank all of you so much. First off, all you new subscribers, you're amazing. But you guys are helping me get to 10,000 followers on Instagram. We're at like 8,200 now, so only 1,800 more. I get the little swipe up feature. So if you're not following me yet, follow me now at The Rewired Soul, and you can see cute pictures of me reading books with my cat, Maya. How cool is that? All right, so anyways, anyways, uh, the most popular video on my channel is the video I did, well, one of the videos I did about Illimation, the, the truth about Illimation. And and yeah, I'm, I, I need to make this, this final video. I have to, because I felt bad. I felt so bad. So all of you who have watched that video, I talked about um, Martin Seligman and the psychology of learned helplessness. And I asked the question. I usually ask questions to see if you can relate, to see if I'm connecting with you on some level with these videos. And so, so, so many of you in the comments said that you could relate to learned helplessness, which is great because you interacted and you let me know, but I screwed up because here at The Rewired Soul, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution, but I didn't provide you with a solution. <laughs> so I wanted to bring it back and talk about Illumination's situation and talk about learned helplessness since I know a lot of you have struggled with that in one way, shape, or form, all right? So today we're going to be focusing on the solution and how Illumination went from hopeless to hopeful. Those of you who aren't caught up to speed, learned helplessness, it is something that many, many, many people deal with. And basically, just to sum it all up, it's the way our brain rewires itself when we keep trying something and it doesn't work, right? One of the examples that we used was like, you know, Illumation trying to get out of her relationship. You know, she tried talking to people, she tried going to the cops and you know, these other things, and she started to feel helpless. Um, for other people, it might be, you know, I know a lot of you mentioned like looking for a job and getting turned down and all of that. So one of the solutions for learned helplessness is just finding this little glimmer of hope, all right? That's one of the reasons I named my first book Hope because like that's all it takes, that's all it takes. And if any of you have been around for like a minute, I don't think anybody is hopeless. I have never, ever, ever met somebody who is hopeless, all right? So a lot of it has to do with perspective, but in this video, I'm also gonna give you some solutions. But before I do that, I have a very special guest, kinda. So because of my videos that I've done about Illimation, Illy actually saw my videos and like, whoa, super cool. So me and Illy, we're buddies now. And yeah, I was talking to her um, on Twitter today in DMs. And yeah, I wanted to see if she had any kind of standout moments in her recovery or in her, you know, healing process that kind of helped her get out of learned helplessness and give her some hope. So here's what she sent to me. Gotcha, okay. I guess this isn't a moment exactly, but rather, yeah, support system. The people who were there with me during it all and tried to help or even had no idea, they stayed with me after that. It's one thing to be supportive, a supportive friend or family member during a bad situation, but on top of that, it's amazing to stay so supportive after that bad relationship ends. Because when the relationship ends, sure this physical danger is gone, but it's not quote unquote over at all. There begins a ve the very long process of healing. And a lot of times victims end up in more abusive relationships or go back to their abusive partners. I'm not a licensed psychologist or anything, so I can't say why that is, but thankfully that didn't happen to me. So yeah, abusive relationships turn your entire world against you, but the constants in your life who stay consistently kind and understanding with you, whether you're being abused or having 20 or having nightmares 20 years later about being abused, they deserve so much credit. It's like having a role model to see how strong you can be for yourself and to be that person for others one day. Hallelujah. Like that is so awesome. Like, so Illy right there is talking about a support system, which is something that I can definitely relate to as well. And this is something that I talk to you guys 
constantly about all the time is finding support, finding people who have been there, uh, been through the same thing, or people who will just be there for you. But I'm glad you touched on that point that like the healing process like takes a while. It doesn't just pff, go away after the relationship ends. And how she talked about like, if we don't have that support system around us, we can fall back into a similar abusive relationships. That's why some people have a pattern of bouncing from one relationship to another. Even if it doesn't reach that level of abuse, maybe it's like uh, falling for people who are verbally or mentally abusive, you know what I mean? But anyways, before Illy left, she, she had one more thing to say, so I'm not making this up. She said, tell him I said to like and subscribe. So you, <laughs> you guys heard it, Illy herself, who just hit one million subscribers on YouTube, just told you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, Illy. But yeah, so for me, I can definitely relate. I can definitely relate to learned helplessness. And so you know, one of the great books I read um, that helped explain learned helplessness as well as ways to get out of it is this book right here. It's called The Happiness Advantage. It's by uh, a professor of positive psychology at Harvard University. His name's Sean Aker. I highly, highly, highly recommend everybody check this book out. I'll link it down in the description and in the pinned comment. It's an amazing book. I, I got it on the audio version. But anyways, talks about a lot of that stuff but for me learned helplessness took its biggest form with my addiction all right and this is something a lot of people with addiction struggle with but I had many 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 relapses and where I got to was you know a little over six and a half years ago I was laid up in the hospital with a 10% chance of living and I was telling my family to give up on me just let me die right and that's a terrible place to be but I was struggling with learned helplessness I had tried to get clean before. I had tried to do that before and it never worked. So my brain was saying, why even try again? Why even bother, right? So thank, thank goodness that I did, you know what I'm saying? Because here I am today, over six and a half years clean. You know, my life is amazing. I got my son back in my life, all that kind of good stuff. So here are some tips I wanna give you if you're somebody who is currently struggling with learn, learned helplessness or you know somebody who might be struggling with learned helplessness and maybe these are some tips that can help them. The first one is listen to stories, okay? Like this is something that helped me so, so, so much because our brain, our brain tells us that it's impossible. The first thing that you need to get over is what we call terminal uniqueness. So many of us think, oh no, my story is different, right? Like I used to think that like if you understood how I grew up, if you understood my messed up childhood, if you understood what I've been through in my life, you would know, you would know that there's no saving a guy like me, right? We call that terminal uniqueness because you think that you're so special and nobody will ever understand you that it's actually going to kill you, all right? So what I had to do was I started having to listen to stories and I was absolutely blown away when I actually started listening to people who had been through what I had been through but their life had gotten better, right? So for example, if you're somebody who's ever been in a relationship like Illy was in, like use her story as hope right? Because when I hear other people sharing a story, I'm like, okay, well, if that person can do it, maybe I can too. Like some people got upset at my video, which is really weird. I didn't even think that would be a controversial video. Some people got upset at my video about um, the, the YouTuber burnout myth, right? And what, what, what I wanted to, get, wanted to get through with that video is if a guy like me can do it, then maybe you can do it too, right? But it, it's, it's all different scenarios, okay? So if somebody's been through a similar situation, you got to find those people. That's why I keep telling you guys, like, go join the Discord server and or the Facebook group. They're always linked down in the description, okay? It's where members of, you know, uh, you know, the community here, we have different chats and just share our experiences. And you guys, you don't even have to talk. You don't have to talk. Like, I can't express to you how much power there is from just shutting your mouth and listening, right? You don't have to say anything. You could just go lurk in the Facebook group, go lurk in the Discord server, and maybe just reading the posts or conversations, you will start to get some hope that you don't have to keep living the way that you're living anymore. The next tip for learned help helplessness is this, and it's an old cliche saying, but it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, it matters how many times you get back up, right? Like I said, I never, ever, ever in my entire life have has met uh, a hopeless case in any scenario, whether it's addiction or whether it's mental health, whether it's an eating disorder, whether it's borderline personality disorder, never met a, a hopeless case. Now, again, it's about getting back up and trying again. One of the biggest misconceptions that I see from people is they tried something once and they think it's never gonna work again, right? Like, think about that. Like, let's, let's relate it to this. Is there a food that you absolutely hated when you were a child and now you love it? 
right? Like maybe a vegetable or something. Like this can be similar to mental health. So maybe when you were like a teenager, you tried therapy and it didn't work. Well, now that you're a 20 or 30 year old adult, maybe it will work, okay? Maybe you just had a bad therapist. Maybe you weren't ready for therapy. Maybe you are now broken enough to accept the suggestions that a therapist is giving you. You see what I mean? Maybe you have more willingness to change now than you did back then. I see it happen with a ton of people. Also, medications, okay? See a doctor, talk about medications. Maybe you had, you know, bad results with a medication in the past. That by no means means that every medication to help with like depression, anxiety, or cravings for addiction or whatever it is won't help you. By the way, non-narcotics, that's what I preach, okay? <laughs> but anyways, just know that you are evolving all the time and just because something didn't work back then doesn't mean that it won't work now. So never give up. And the last thing is something that my beautiful, amazing mother taught me, uh, the, psych the professional psychologist. Um, she taught me about this thing called the miracle question. So I did some research on it. And basically that question is, if you went to sleep tonight, and some miracle happened and your, your entire situation changed, ask yourself or journal about it and say, what would that look like? What would this thing look like? And now start, start working backwards from there. See what you have to do. This is also something I recommend when setting goals. You start at the ultimate goal and then work backwards, right? But basically you work backwards and you see what is the first step in getting there. So, so that miracle question, it's part of solution-based therapy, okay? So I highly suggest that you check that out. Um, my mom's gonna be doing some worksheets and stuff like that in the near future, but you can Google it and all that stuff. But anyways, I hope this video helped out. Thank you again, Illy, for being a part of this video. And all of you, all of you, let me know down in the comments below. Share your stories about how you thought you were hopeless or something wasn't gonna work out and then it did, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get some extra exclusive stuff, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.